Hi, I'm Eric. And I'm Heather. And we're pre-engaged. Welcome to another pre-engaged mailbag video. Sarah from Grand, Ra Grand Rapids, Michigan asked us, I'm a sophomore in college and I recently recognized the aspect of spiritual intimacy in a relationship and I've started having questions about it. For example, what is spiritual intimacy? Is it bad to have spiritual intimacy with a guy I'm not married to? Why does the Bible warn against sexual purity, lust, etc., but I can't find anything on spiritual intimacy with a guy? I decided to look up Christian perspectives on spiritual intimacy, and I found your series. It perfectly covered all the aspects I wondered about, except one. I'm still confused about what scripture has to say about it. I know we are to guard our hearts, the wellspring of life, but what more does the Lord say about it? I can't seem to find anything, and I can't grasp why the topic puzzles me so much. I'm confused if the concept of precaution against spiritual intimacy is from the Lord, or if it is a worldly Christian concept. Thank you so much for writing this series. I'm sure it has benefited many young people, single, dating, or married. Well, Sarah, you are welcome. We're glad that it has blessed you and that we hope that it blesses the other audience who reads it as well. In preparing for this video, we've taken a lot of notes down, so we end up we may end up reading some of it or maybe even most of it, but um, we hope you enjoy the answer that we're about to give you. So first, it is wonderful that you are seeking scripture instead of Christian-sounding philosophy by which to base your decisions. Indeed, the 23rd verse in the 4th chapter of the book of Proverbs does tell us to guard our hearts, for from it flow the springs of life. As this is a proverb, this is a general saying, and not, and not specifically tied to spiritual intimacy, though it can be applied in that direction. And another issue to, to talk about, too, is that um, during Bible times, um, there wasn't much of a construct to go along with our current American dating philosophy. In Bible times, the father would secure a bride for the son when he came of age, and he would marry her, and it sounds a lot more like the arrangement God, uh, God had for Christ and the church as well, um, a lot more than, than our current um, dating philosophy in the United States and, and other areas. Um, because of that, though, there just weren't many scriptures about that w about intimacy between the sex of spiritual intimacy because that just wasn't a thing. I mean, they were kept apart pretty much until they were brought together. Um, so I think that's probably one reason there's just not a lot biblically on the topic. Right. However, another verse I'd like to share is one repeated in the Song of Solomon. Don't arouse or awaken love until it pleases. This is found in Song of Solomon 2, 7, 3, 5, and 8, 4. And in context, this passage is talking about sexual intimacy between a man and a woman and encourages the Shulamite to wait until marriage because her natural inclination is to give herself to Solomon since he loves her so well. However, I would also say that this concept, too, can be applied to spiritual intimacy. There is a time and place for such intimate bonding, and it is found within marriage. In fact, our physical being is often an allusion to the more real spiritual reality. Meaning, if physical intimacy is forbidden before marriage, how much more important would it be for spiritual intimacy to be forbidden before marriage? I tend to think that this is the main reason why we don't see many verses explicitly discussing the formation of spiritual intimacy before marriage. It is already assumed to be unwise because the lesser physical aspect is already forbidden. And digging a little deeper, um, we look into the nature of men and women and the relationship they have with Christ, uh, have in Christ with each other before marriage. Um, those who do the will of the Father are listed as brothers and sisters in Christ, and that comes from Matthew 12:50. Um, therefore, the brother and sister are not one before marriage, rather distinct individuals. So it's dangerous for a couple to confuse the categories of oneness and distinctiveness before marriage. Um, a couple attempting to forge a spiritual intimacy before marriage is like forging a physical intimacy before marriage. It's out of context because the two are not one yet. Yep. Next, thinking about faithfulness in marriage, how would you feel about your spouse being physically intimate with another person? Well, there's something uncomfortable with that proposition. So how much more so if that person was spiritually intimate with another person? And if marriage is not required for such spiritual intimacy, then why would it be a problem to be spiritually intimate with several people before marriage, or even several people after marriage? It starts to feel a little bit like spiritual polygamy, doesn't it? Additionally, in Proverbs 31, 10 through 12, um, familiar verse, uh, the words of King Lemuel from his mother, writes, an excellent wife who can find. She's far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. Would it be doing her future husband good if she were to develop spiritual intimacy with another man? I think not. Before choosing to marry, though, you'll want to know that your sweetie does have a rich prayer life of his own. 
In our opinion, it is okay to share what God is teaching you, but no more than you would share with a good friend or any brother or sister in Christ until you are on the expressway to the altar. And there's no magic line to avoid crossing. It would be really nice if there were, um, but your boyfriend and you, that you're going to need to pray for wisdom as to how far is, is too far at this point. Um, you know, and different stages, there will be different levels, which you definitely need to put your trust in the Lord and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit on this topic. And save those hidden treasures of your heart um, for, for marriage. And for right now, keep those between you and the Lord because you're not going to get the season back. And it's just sweet to have those personal times with the Lord that's just between the two of you. And you know, we hope that this has been helpful for you. Yep, absolutely. So if you'd like to see another pre-engaged mailbag video, please click on our contact form and send us a question. We'd love to hear from you and help you too. Grace be with you.